Six teams are playing in a hockey tournament where each team is playing against every other team exactly once. At an intermediate stage, the status is as follows. This is the status. And it's given that the team that scores more goals than it concedes wins the match, the normal, the usual thing. While if both the teams score the same number of goals, the match is declared drawn. The match played between team X and team Y, if team X score 1 and concedes none, then the score line would be team X, team Y, 1, 0. So this is the table. And uh, you can see each team has played exactly 2 match. So 6 team, 2 match, so it will be a total of 6 into 2 by 2. That is 6 matches in total because each match has 2 team involved. So total 6 matches details have been given. Let us try to decode this. Where do we start? The primary question in these type of situations, where do we start? So in games of tournament situations, you always start with draws. Why? Let me tell you. See, team D has two draws. Team B has one draw. Team C has two one draw. That means team B has one draw against team B, C and one draw against team B. So against C, against B. Team C has one match against D, Team B has a one match against D. Now, what would be those score line? In case of Team D, the score line, the total goal scored by Team D and total goals conceded by Team D is 1-1. One, one. How is that possible if both matches are drawn? Only possibility is one of the match score line is 1-1-0-0 one, one, zero, zero, one, one, or 0-0. Zero, zero. That's it. Because both the matches are drawn, so a score line of a goal done and goal conceded should be same right now in case of uh, team c or team b in case of team b we can say that team b has total goal versus against 5 is to 1 so it can be 1 1 and 4 0 or 0 0 and 5 1 both of these are possible and there is a team who can concede 5 goals in case of team c total score line is 2 0 the goals conceded and uh, goal scored 2, 0 and 2. So, team C has won one match and drawn one match. That means team C did not concede any goal. So, the match which was drawn against C must be 0, 0. Right? And the other match must read 2, 0. So, in case of C versus D, the score line is now clear that in case of C, the score line was 0, 0. In course of B, the score line was 1-1. One, one. Now, the match B versus D, we already have the score line, which is 1-1. One, one. So, against D, it was 1-1. One, one. So, against, against one team, B must have scored 4-0. Now, which team it would be? So, can it be team E? See, team E lost both the matches. If team E lost a match, by 0 4 the next match score line would be 1 0 that means team e won one match this is not possible that means it's team f who lost the match against b by 0 4 so against b the score is 0 4 correct and the next match score line would be 0 3 whichever team it is we will figure out in case of b this match this team is f correct okay so far, so good. Now, in case of team F, this is 0-3. Team F considered three goals against a team. Which team it could be? It cannot be team B. We need to figure out for a team who scored three or more than three goals. That is either A or B. We already have the details for B. B versus F is 4-0. So, it must be team A who won the match against F by 3-0. This will be F by 3-0. And the second match of A the score line must read 2 1. So, against which team this score line will be 2 1? Only one team is left, which is E. So in case of E, E versus A, the score line is 1 2, and the second match must be 0 2. And this match must be against which 0 2? It must be against C. So, C versus E, the result was 2 0. So, that's it. All the matches we are done for. Correct? So, let us go to the questions. Questions. Which of the following matches are yet to be played? Team A, V, C, D. 
we already know C versus D was drawn. This is not possible. C versus D drawn, not possible. Team E, F, B, D. B versus D was also drawn. This is not possible. Team C, D, again, this is not possible. We just need to check this. Team A versus B was not played. In case of this match, this match 2-1, uh, 1-2, two, one, one, two, it was against E, right? Okay, so team A versus B was not played as well as team E versus F was not played. So, answer is option E. Question number 23, which of the following score line is a possible outcome in the tournament? Team A versus D, 1-0, no. Team A versus E, 2-1, yes, that is correct. Team A versus E, 2-1. Then, question number 24, which of the following score line is not a possible outcome in the tournament? Team A versus F, 4-0. That is, that is, uh, team A versus F is 3-0, not 4-0. So, this is not a possible outcome. Team B versus F, 4-0, we know that. C versus D, 0-0, we know that. C versus E, 2-0. C versus E, 2-0. Uh, yes, that is also possible. Only score line that is not possible is option E. So, this was a fun set related to games and tournament. If you have practiced games and tournament sets, then this is a pretty much doable set, right? The graph below represents the performance of four professors across years measured on four variables. <coughs> percentage of time spent on teaching, percentage of time spent on research, feedback on a scale of 10 on right hand side, this is, and number of publications right hand side. Assume that the cumulative time spent per year on research and time teaching activities are same for all four professors. So, this percentage value, the base of this percentage value is same. We can assume that to be 100. Each of them taught only one course of 90 classroom hours. Okay, total classroom hours is 90. All right. Total classroom hours is 90 out of which we need to uh, find the percentage of time in teaching, percentage of time on research. All right. Okay. Now, this graph must be little uh, confusing. So, let me tell you. This is a square box, number of publication, and in every where, the lower line is for publication. Okay. And circle is for feedback, and the top line denotes the feedback for every professor. Okay. Now, let us solve the questions. Question number 25, it says, which of the following shows the maximum year to year percentage growth in feedback? In feedback, okay. Feedback is the top line. Professor arithmetic during 13 to 14. Arithmetic 13 to 14. Arithmetic 13 to 14. This is from here to here, right. So, final value is 6.5. Initial value is 6.5 initial value is 4. So, this is basically 6.5 upon 4, right? Initial value, final value. The percentage increase depends on initial value and final value, right? Final value upon final value minus initial value upon initial value into 100. This, if you break, it will be final value upon initial value minus 1 into 100. So, ultimately, it depends on final value upon initial value. That is why we are only going to compare the ratio. Professor algebra during 15 to 16, Professor algebra during 15 to 16 from here to here. So, 5 and 8, this is 8 by 5. Then, Professor calculus during 12 to 13, Professor calculus 12 to 13. So, this is 4 and this is 7. Final value is 7, initial value is 4. Professor calculus during 14 to 15, 14 to 15, this, this is 5.5, this is 8, no, 9, 9 upon 5.5. So, we need to compare these values. What are these values? This will become 13 by 8. This will be same as this, uh, let us keep it as it is. In fractions, it will be 1.6, in fractions, it will be 1.75. This will be 18 upon 11, which is equal to 1.70, so 6 something, 1.63 something, right? And uh, this value, 13 by 8 is equal to again 1.6 something. So, the greatest is option C, professor calculus during 12 to 13. Next one, count the number of intenses, 
instances in which annual decreasing efforts in research is accompanied with annual increase in feedback <coughs> okay research we need to check all the possibilities where the research is decreasing and the feedback is increasing year to year okay so let's come back here and let's check so 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 feedback is the top one research is the top one it's decreasing feedback is decreasing we need to check only those cases where both of these things are happening where research is decreasing and feedback is increasing research is decreasing but feedback is not increasing in this case feedback is increasing research is decreasing right this value to this value so one in this case decreasing we don't need to check increasing feedback is increasing research is decreasing so two such feedback is increasing research is decreasing so three feedback is decreasing we don't need to check let's check here feedback increasing research decreasing one more case feedback here increasing and uh, research is also increasing not possible increasing decreasing so second case then in this case it's constant in this case feedback is decreasing let's come here decreasing 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 feedback is increasing research is also increasing one more case feedback increasing research also de decreasing so second case as all of these values the base is 90 so the percentage will be taken respectively right then again feedback is increasing but research is uh, also increasing this is not counted feedback increasing research decreasing so one more case not this one not this one increasing decreasing second case increasing increasing decreasing decreasing that's it three two 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 six plus three a total of nine such instances so the answer is option c then the last one it says research efficiency is the ratio of cumulative number of participation for a period of three years okay research efficiency is equal to ratio of cumulative number of participants of participation for period of three years to the cumulative number of hours spent on research activity in those three years which of the following professors is the least efficient researcher for the period 2015 to 17 okay sorry this was publication that's why that's why i was confused research efficiency is equal to cumulative number of publication upon cumulative number of hours spent on research activity this we need to find where we find this list for which of these professors see this research activity the base is given in percentage but the base is 90 right 90 hours so it will be x percent of 90 in each case so we don't need to bother regarding the actual hours we can take the percentage values and we are good so let's check this one by one here in case of professor algebra research efficiency total number of publications total number of publications from 15 to 17 is uh, this is 3 plus 2 3 plus 2 is uh, 5 plus 3 8 divided by now this is in percentage so we will take this 35 percent and this is uh, 70 25 percent 60 and this is 40 percent 60 and 40 so this will be 8 upon 90 100 percent means 8 upon 90 but we are writing in in percentage only now in case of arithmetic in case of arithmetic number of publications is equal to 15 to 17 3 2 plus 3 plus 3 that is equal to 8 as well and uh, this will be this is uh, 30 100 minus 30 is 70 this is uh, 50 120 and this is 60 One, uh, this is 60 yes so 180 <coughs> number of publications is 8 and that is 180 right guys this was uh, 70 and uh, 30 100 160 okay 160 okay next in case of calculus total number of publications is equal to 3 plus 3 plus 2 
that is equal to 8 same here. Then total number of hours this will be 45, 100 minus 45 is 55, 55, 110, 110 and this is 60 that means uh, 170 and we are left with geometry. Okay. Now, now, now in case of this 110 and 40. Uh, looks like I have made some mistake. This is 55, this is 55, 110, 110 plus 40. This is 150, guys. This is 150. Let us check this one again. This is uh, 70, this is 50, 120, 120 and 60. Wait a second, wait a second. Yes, 50 and 70, 120, 120 and 40, 160. That is correct. In case of geometry, in case of geometry, total number of publications is equal to this is 3, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 4, 8. This is again 8 divided by total number of hours in percentages. So, this value is 100 minus 25, which is 75, 75 and this is 25, so 100, 100 and uh, 20. So, this is 120, this was 150. So, if we are talking about least efficient, that means which value is the least, this value is least, right. In case of arithmetic, the value is least because the denominator is the greatest. So, professor arithmetic has the least, if it was the least efficient researcher, answer is option A. Is there any other question? No. That is the end of this question. The graph was the main point of this, otherwise uh, it was nothing special regarding this set. Yes, if you know how to compare the fractions easily, then this is much easier for you. Okay.